There are those who would like to see you fail in your journey. That's not going to happen on my watch. Let's go. Can we stop for ice cream, Bart? Can we stop for ice cream? Oh, it's the Max! Ho 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 ho! The Portland Light Rail System, the Max, and that's what it actually looks like. How sweet! Okay, end of May, June, July, and now we're into August, so... That was the longest night of my life. Hello, I am Simulator Dirk, and welcome to another episode of Simulator Dirk, American Truck Simulator. Although, having said that, we are in Canada at the moment. We're in the middle of a job taking a frack tank from Halifax, Nova Scotia to Fort Simpson in the Northwest Territories. We still have, in our job window, 147 hours remaining. That doesn't obviously mean that we're driving for that amount of time. Now, let's have a look at our frack, our frack tank. And I thought that it looked... I thought that it looked weird and maybe it was a bug. But having said that, I did some Googling. And that's what they can actually look like. So it's not a bug where there's only the two wheels at the back. That is actually what they look like and what a frack tank is so i learnt was a temporary container or a portable container that you can use to have liquids in so say for instance you're on a remote work site and you need fuel in a um in a container and then at the end of the job you you move it to somewhere else doesn't necessarily need to be fuel, but any, any sort of liquid. Uh, fuel and water are probably the two most likely suspects. But that is what a frack tank is, and that is what the trailer actually looks like. So you just take the, uh, take the um, container off. And that is basically that. So let's get in the cab. We've already said good morning to Mr. Morgan Freeman. So we will depart in a moment. Just to bring you up to speed, we have a frack tank, which we've just discussed, just over 8,000 pounds. We're heading to Fort Simpson. Our window of expectation is sometime on Saturday morning. And we have 147 hours remaining in our window. We have our next rest stop in 14 hours. We've got a full tank of fuel. We're fully rested. It is Sunday morning at 8.23 in the morning. Now, if we were to drive the whole time, which we can't, from Sunday morning, it would take us until Tuesday night to get there. We've still got 61 hours, almost 62 hours of driving time remaining at just over 3,000 miles. So let's get into it. Lights on for safety. And we'll head out of this. This is a rather nice setup actually for a uh, service centre. So you've got your fuel, you've got a sleeping area, which I just had a nice sleep. And you've also got your way station. And off we go. So heading back onto the big open road for another episode of Simulator Truck Simulator. We're just going to wait here. There's plenty of time. Not many cars on the road. So let's continue. In our nice Volvo truck heading through Canada. This is a uh, modified map. In case this is your first episode. And we're driving 
through a lot of Canada. We won't get there on... I don't think we'll get there this episode. Very, very unlikely. Continue straight. Uh, so heading towards Montreal. Uh, our celebrity simulated navigator voice, the simulated Morgan Freeman. Good morning, Mr. Freeman. So we're heading across Canada. In previous episodes, we drove into Mexico, and then we also uh, drove across the U.S. down south. And then we headed up in the last couple of episodes. We headed north along the east coast of America into Canada to Halifax, Nova Scotia. And now we're basically returning to the west coast of via Canada. Uh, American Truck Simulator, I have heavily modified it. There will be a link in the show notes, or there'll be a list in the show notes for where you can get the mods if you play American Truck Simulator. There's a uh, whole series that will allow you to get into Mexico and Canada, you will need all of the map DLCs that have been released, and that gives you the assets that the uh, developers who have developed these map mods have used, and so sometimes there's a reasonable amount of detail, like now, uh, when you get to some cities, that's a little bit more detailed. But you can really expand and really get some really long jobs that may not be possible in the um, in the base. I've also maxed out on long distance. So as as you drive an American truck sim, you get a series of skill points the more you drive. So I've maxed out now on the long distance stuff. So this is a very long drive. You know, we drove for something like 10 hours in the previous episode. We've still got 60 hours of driving time remaining. And I am trying to keep these episodes between about 60 and 90 minutes. Unless I'm, of course, very, very close to delivering a load. Sometimes I'll deliver a load and it might be just that little bit shorter. But for this one, I think this one's gonna go over a few episodes because the distance is just that long. We actually had, on the uh, previous delivery from Atlanta to Halifax, we also had a frack tank. So I'm not necessarily going after the loads, but I am going after the location. So I... Right. And then exit right. Okay, so we're exiting right. Okay. we. Okay. Actually, I'm exiting anyway, so I'm going to go this way. I don't think they're blocking the exit. Guess we'll find out. But if you're blocking the exit, you would not block it like that. That was a little bit cheeky. Uh, I should have followed the direction of going off to the left-hand lane and then going around and then exiting anyway. They didn't really block the exit. It was just more blocking the lane. Oh, here we go. Hang on. Now this could be the reason. Now they did a very poor job of blocking the exit. This is what they should have done. So it looks like we've got a ute into the back of a truck. Oh, jeez. Look at that. Uh, 
Oh, so the um, so what's happened? The container's basically collapsed. In, it's basically caved it in two. Uh, that's a good look at our frack tank. Uh, we've stopped the engine, and I'm fun to see for a little bit how long this is actually going to be here for. They did a very poor job of actually blocking the intersection, uh, blocking the exit. So if we just pan around, actually, I don't think it's going to let us pan as much as I thought. It's a back view. From that angle, it doesn't look too bad, but when you look. Oh, well, that's a good back angle at us. Um, when you look at that front angle, it doesn't look that bad. But when you actually pan around, now unfortunately, in American Truck Sim, you can't actually get out of the. You can can't really get out of the cab and go for a walk and go for a closer look. Um. Now, I'm not going to sit here all day to see if that thing disappears. We'll see if we could go. Yeah, that's not good. The, um, the container is bowed and also the, uh, the trailer wouldn't be, wouldn't be good either. Um, I'm just going to go around, go into the breakdown lane, see if we could get a, there should be no reason why we can't go down this breakdown lane, that's why breakdown lanes were invented. So now if we have a look now. Yeah, that's not good. That's not good. The whole thing is bowed. That, my friends, is not good. So the... There's my truck. I did see that once before, you know, on a previous episode in um, Southern America where a similar sort of thing had happened. But that is a good. Uh, we'll get back in the cab. We'll go past this very, very slowly. Ah, it cleared. Okay, it did clear. I was there for about 42 minutes in game time, really. Okay, we can continue now. The truck cleared. They really, on that freeway or the highway that we're on, they did a really bad job. Oi! What the? What the hell is going on? Wow, I just fell through the earth. That was the longest night of my life. This is sometimes what can happen to you, mods. That was the longest night of my life. Keep left. And then turn left. Wow, I just fell through the earth. That was the longest night of my life. That was the, that was the longest night of my life. That was the longest night of my life. That was the long that was the longest that was the longest night of my life. That was the longest night of my life. 
Um, that was the longest night of my life. Keep right. And pin. Exit right. Uh, we're going to tow to service. Assisted service can take you and your truck to Montreal. It will cost you nearly $3,000 on the trip. will take six hours. The charge will be covered by your employer. Do you agree? Yes. Well, I want to get back into the game. So hopefully now it should load us in Montreal. Wow. Okay, we're going to repair the truck. $29,000 worth of damage. That was one hell of a glitch. And that has seriously put us behind now. Six hours to get to Montreal. Um, so there we go. We're starting again at the service centre. Um, so we'll start the engine. Lights on for safety, and let's get going. That was just a, um, our next rest stop in four hours. We've still got plenty of time in our window, but uh, that has put us behind where we would have wanted to have been. Uh, again, for a day of all of my own. Now, turn right. turn right. Thanks, Morgan. That was weird. Now, at the start, or the end of the episode where I actually arrived in Halifax, it did a similar thing, but it put me in a, a, in a shed. Turn right. They haven't even got traffic lights here. They've just got lines that would indicate traffic lights. Now, I've never been to Montreal, so I can't comment, but um, didn't really get to see anything anyway. So, my aim now is just to keep driving for as long as possible uh, during the daylight. That actually makes me wonder, in that sort of situation, where you do get towed somewhere, if that counts as a rest period, or if that's just count as um, time on your day anyway. Uh, I should probably be in the left lane here. If that, yeah, if that counts as part of your as part of your work day or not. Now, for the purposes of American Truck Simulator, it has counted that as part of my driving day. So it's about four hours to go. Got a full tank of, uh, well, basically a full tank of diesel, so we don't, or three quarters. So we've got plenty. Of, we've got plenty of time. Uh, our time of arrival, if we drove continuously, has blown out to early Wednesday morning, about 5 a.m. Wednesday morning. Uh, but of course, we wouldn't be able to drive continuously from Sunday evening to Wednesday afternoon because that'd just be ridiculous. Still about 600 miles to empty our fuel tank. We 
Stein hier rein, Dude. Stein hier rein. Now, I don't know also how much that's actually thrown me off course because from what I could see from where we were going, it actually didn't look like we were going to go into Montreal at all. Having game glitches like that is something that you run the risk of when you have mods especially. When you go to the when you go to the uh, main menu screen, it says down the bottom of it, we've detected unauthorized mods. We will not support unauthorized mods. If you have mods and are having problems with them, remove them. Do 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 do. Hello, baby girl. My meows joined me. Not walking on the keyboard. That's good, girl. Not walking on the keyboard. Thank you. She's mainly learnt not to walk on the keyboard, which is awesome. Can you imagine having to explain that sort of damage to your boss? You're out the middle of you're out the middle of Canada somewhere, and then all of a sudden you fall through the earth. You have the uh, voice of Morgan Freeman say, "This is the longest night of my life." Ah, we've got to stop go on the road work, so we have to wait here. Have a look outside while we can. Oh, come on, Mr. Truck, you got a green light. There we go. Are they letting one person through all the time? Actually, this is a pretty, ex pretty good view, actually. Should do that a little bit more when I'm at traffic lights. Just give you a little bit of the alternative view, a little bit of a cue behind us, not much. There's a good view of the top of our tank. Front, the frustrating thing is there's no cars coming in the opposite direction. Oh, here we go. 
says stop here on red, not stop here on green. That was part of the problem. That all the cars were stopping at the stop line. It only says stop here if it's if it's red, not green. I get to see the road work. Turn our lights on now. So if we see a rest area, we will pull up. And the ironic thing is, I, I know it's tiring just sitting in a truck. I, pre I presume they would have been sitting in the uh, tow truck on that long seven hour tow. You know, and I know that that would get tiring in itself. You know, being, being a passenger as well for that amount of time. It's funny, when it comes down to things like motion sickness or travel sickness, some people are totally fine if they're the driver, but if they're anything else, if they're the front seat, front seat passenger, if they're the back seat passenger in a car, um, they can't cope, they only can drive. There are others that are okay with driving, okay with being a front seat passenger but you know put them in the back and and it and you know they can't function and then again there's you know it, it takes all sorts for the world to go around but it's just fascinating like i know a couple of people who are like that and also the there's the um issue of real life motion simulators you know, have we got some more road work coming up here? Um, the left lane's closed on this occasion. When you're in a full motion simulator, uh, some people can't handle the full motion simulator. But they can do their job. You know, their job is motion. Uh, for instance, a train driver. There's a couple that I know that have problems with the full motion simulator, but put them on a real train and they're sweet because the, uh, you are getting tired. Yes, I'm aware of that. Um, there are some people who can drive a train perfectly normally, but due to the different sensations and sometimes over-exaggerated movement of the... Uh, of the full motion simulator um i've had it described to me as like being a, um an inner e or a balance issue that you have certain verbal not verbal cues certain visual clues when you're for instance driving a train or driving a truck and then you have uh, different visual clues and different senses of balance and equilibrium, you know, things being equal, equilibrium, I think that's the way you say it. Um, so it feels, totally feels and looks different if you're in a simulator, as much as they try to replicate what it feels like in the real world. Um, sometimes it does get a bit different if you're in a full motion simulator. Then again, with some people, even with the motion turned off, because it's the um, it's the weird move, it's the weird thing that you your eyes get the feeling and your body gets the feeling that you're moving, um, but you're actually not, and that's what does some people's heads in. Like I know on the. Um, 
episode that I recorded recently that I had the audio issues with, so I didn't release it. Um, leaving Atlanta. Uh, we've got a rest stop up here, so uh, we'll pull in up here. Um, I'd driven for 300 kilometers, you know, five and a half hour shift, and I was feeling a little bit tired, and then I decided to, um, to come and do a, a, an hour of American Truck Sim, and I was really tired after that. So we're just filling up and then we'll go and sleep for the night. So three three hundred and twenty eight dollars later. Sixty five gallons or was only like half full. Now let's see if I can do an okay job of actually parking the trailer. Um, I look like I'm doing better today. Is it going to let me... Oh, that's much better than my usual effort. I'm not far enough forward, I don't think. It's not letting... It's not registering that I'm actually in a place of sleep. There we go. You are getting tired, yeah. Now, I've noticed that... Sometimes, if I... Pull up at the first parking spot that I pull up in. It doesn't actually recognise it as a rest spot. But if I pull up in the... S if I park like this and then I go into another spot, it does actually... So let's try that. You are getting tired, you should find a place to rest. I'm well aware of that. Now this should be bringing it in a lot better, I'm hoping. Doesn't help that I can't really see. I'm, look like I'm going all right. You should just be able to drive in and drive out. There we go. I recognised at that time. So we'll stop the engine. We'll have a quick look outside. That's pretty good for me. Not perfect, but that's pretty good. So if we come forward a bit. Alright, 
We're getting some Zeds. Alright, so it's a new morning. It's Monday morning now. That is probably the best that I've parked a frack tank at a rest stop. Gonna get in the cab. And we're fully No, I didn't need to do that. Nah. This is why I hate reversing. And this is why I'm going to cheat. And I'm just going to do these ones. You don't need to see me reversing a truck for 15 minutes. That's why I'm a simulated truck driver, not a real one. That's why I drive things on rails. Alright, nothing coming. Let's go. So, we've got a full tank of fuel. Full tank of fuel, it's now Monday morning. If we were to drive continuously, we'd now be expected sometime on Wednesday. Still got 2,700, 2,800 miles to go on 56 hours of actual driving time. We're not obviously going to finish it on uh, this episode, but we've got a full tank of fuel, so let's go. Now a school bus on a Monday morning, I'd, uh, yeah, I'd believe that.
strength. Continue straight. Now, suggesting that I go off here, I wonder if this is just one of those stupid little pointless detours or if I do actually need to exit. I'm not going to um, risk finding out. It's a long enough journey without going the wrong way already. Way station coming up. Okay, we're going to try this. We're going to see what happens if you don't pull into the way station. I've been instructed to pull into the way station. Let's see what happens. Okay, so I've passed it now. Oh, I got fined 600 bucks. There we go. So that's what happens. I got fined. I got fined 600 dollars. So if someone asks you what happens if you don't go into a way station, an American truck simulator, you get fined. I didn't even get the sound of the whoop whoop. The sound of the police. I was a little disappointed. I just wanted to see what would happen because I think it happened early in a very early episode when I first started play when I first started playing this um, this series back in the original Simulator Dirk series, but uh, now we know. And I won't do it again. Continue straight. So I was wondering where we were. We're not even in Ontario yet because the sign just said to Ontario, so.
Now we're coming on to Ontario. Exit right. Exit right. I've just been thinking about an idea. Um, I've just been thinking about an idea when I, while I've been driving here for the last few minutes. I know that some people, when they are in this sort of situation on their simulator, there's the option to listen to music or something like that while you're while you're going along. Now those people usually aren't um, YouTubers or streamers because you have the issue with um, recorded music and that sort of thing and, and YouTube especially picks up on um, copyrighted music and that sort of stuff. But I wonder, because some of these... Some of these simulators, um, I think American Truck Simulator does it, Euro Truck and Farm Simulator definitely does, that you can listen to an in-game radio station. Um, Grand Theft Auto does it as well. 
but I usually haven't done that for copyright reasons. You know, it's bad enough that I am, you know, making a YouTube video based on gameplay. But then again, you could also argue fair use as well, I think. Um, and the there are some some um, game developers who do encourage people to stream and record their gameplay. So it's a gray it's a gray area. Continue straight. You know, it's a, it's a gray area in for for um in some eyes. But I wonder many years ago now it's probably been or oh, would be six years ago um, since I podcasted what would happen I used to play a whole heap of um, a whole heap of unsigned and independent bands and I had permission to do it uh, in relation to music podcasts that I used to produce, uh, Irk FM for anyone who may um, who may know of me from that time period. So I wonder what would happen if I would play, like somehow set it up so I can play old episodes of my podcast while I'm while I'm driving. And at least that gives you something different to listen to and might expose you to a whole heap of music that that you might not have ever heard before. And a lot of the... Um, a lot, but not all of the bands. Like, if, if I think about uh, the Australian bands that I used to um, promote and have really close relationships with if I think about them and this was um, pre-global pandemic so in many instances the global pandemic didn't have anything to do with it but if I think about the um, the metal bands for instance that I that I used to play the Australian ones that I used to play often there wouldn't be that many of them that would be actually still active in that in the way that they were six years ago if I think about um, bands such as Foundry Road as a uh, classic example um, their drummer Brad is playing in several or he has played in several bands. Um, he's part of a um, Metallica tribute group, amongst others. And Scotty, the guitarist, he's involved in Red Sea. Uh, Red Sea features some members of Domino and also um, Attila from Cordelius as um, as a classic as a classic example um, Red Sea by the way um, have played at the Sydney Opera House I would have loved to have actually gone and seen them at the Sydney Opera House because for um, any sort of band that has had its roots in being unsigned, independent, etc. To be able to play somewhere like the Sydney Opera House, even if you're a mainstream band, um, is an achievement. But having said that, if you're a hard rock slash metal band, if you're at the harder end of the spectrum... Although... Domino and Red Sea would also be fairly radio friendly. Um, it's amazing to think that a band or what is effectively Domino uh, with a couple of substitutions have played at the Sydney Opera House. The Sydney Opera House wouldn't even 
feature very popular um, overseas bands because then it's not the sort of venue that they would normally play. Like you wouldn't have somebody like Justin Bieber or uh, Avril Lavigne, Nickelback, you know, those sort of radio friendly, Katy Perry, you know, or Katy Perry might be an exception, I guess. Um, but maybe not even, you know, artists such as that wouldn't necessarily perform at the Sydney Opera House because it's not their type of venue, might not have the capacity. Um, they'd be more of your arena, you know, 20,000 or so, or your stadium. So for, a, for what it was effectively a band that I helped promote, for them to play at the Sydney Opera House is a rather big deal. Uh, Smoke and Mirrors have, have changed into Red Hook. So there's some bands that, while the band which I knew them of are no longer active, some of the people are still active, you know, six years later. Um, Red Sea actually, I think they've just released or they're about to release a um, a video clip that they shot during the pandemic. So I wonder if I could actually get that to work and if YouTube said to me Oh, dude, that's a copyright violation. Well, hang on a minute. It's my own podcast. Although once I... There was a dispute, um, which I don't know if it's been, been finalised or not. They tried to say that I used... On Train Simulator, they tried to say that I used a clip of somebody else and it was something totally unrelated to what the episode was. I didn't even, I don't think I even mentioned that that person by name, but there was a short segment that tried to say that I'd ripped it off that and I'm like, I am aware of the creator. I, you know, never, uh, you know, I never use other people's clips. I might reference them Sometimes I'll link to them, but I'll never do what I have seen others do that will actually show p parts of other people's clips. But I don't think I don't think that I don't think that would be a big issue, and it's not as if I'm making money off YouTube anyway. But I was just I was just thinking, just for something a little bit different. Um, I wonder if for the next episode I can actually get that to work because I would have all of the, all of the files um, I've still got all the files for the episodes on my on my computer yeah and even if I played it at a lower volume so if I wanted to talk for instance um, Continue straight. might be something interesting just to try as a trial I know that sometimes um, Facebook and YouTube are infamous for it uh, I know during recordings or live streams of hockey games that I've commented on and in some cases filmed it would pick up the music that is played in in the in the arena um, and it would um, issue copyright infringements or whatever like that and as much as the um, sports media people who stream on YouTube and Facebook will often tell them 
we don't have any control of what gets played in arena um, you know even if you are a um, even if you are a radio station for instance that is fully licensed to play music um, it still picks up and it can tell you like for instance we were doing a women's hockey game once and the only song out of all the songs that it actually played um, the only song that it picked up as a copyright violation was the Australian National Anthem and it actually told us which version of the anthem that we'd played and it actually did match up to the one that we that we um, heard in arena because we're not actually in that situation the um, the commentary crew aren't, or the production team aren't, controlling the music that's in arena. Uh, it has come to the point where um, some productions have tried to say to the rink, um, or to say to, to the venue, um, "Can you not play copyrighted music because it's it's interrupting?" But that usually doesn't have any effect. You know, I know that I've sometimes done, had played copyrighted music on a on a stream, but I was doing it um, in conjunction with a radio station, which would have licenses and etc. So it usually wasn't usually wasn't an issue. And if anyone did pick up on it, well, that's the, that's the way you can go down. Uh, on some of the productions that I've been involved in for. Um, music and intermissions or whatever they've actually gone ahead and got some licensed music that you know is suitable for a stream or whatever so we're down to about a quarter of a tank of diesel so we've been going pretty solid all day So when we come up to when we come up to a fuel station, I think we'll fill up and probably call it a night. Still got plenty of time in the window, and still got two thousand two hundred sixty nine miles to um, to go before our destination. Monday, it's Monday afternoon, there's a uh, fuel stop, so that works out. I think it's a bit too early to um, have a rest though. So we won't necessarily have a rest just yet. But it is a good idea to um, pull in and get the fuel now. So, 111 gallons, uh, $534. All right, let's go. we got before our rest stop. We've still got four and a half hours before we need to rest. Ninety five percent damage on the Well 
Well, as long as that doesn't continue to show us damages on the... Uh, I don't think it wiped off. Ah, jinx! Trailer damage seventy, uh, ninety-seven percent. Actually, what we might do, we might pull off to the side and get that repaired. Because I wondered if it actually repaired it from the um, previous incident. night of my life so yeah I'm wondering if it actually repaired the trailer from before from that, that other the longest night of my life um Oh no, that's actually to do stuff to the truck. I don't want to do that. I can't see anything about how I can fix the trailer. Can only see about the um the actual truck. So it's now Monday night. We need to find somewhere to rest. I'd say it's not letting me do anything else, so um, we're just going to have to uh, put up with that. Now we need... Oh, there's a rest spot right here, apparently. But I don't know where. Let's have a look, see if we can see. Where can we rest? Out the back? So that's what it's telling me? Maybe we can rest in here. Oh, we can. Oh, that worked out very well. Ah, oh, that worked out super well. Alright, let's not track knife the truck. Let's 
straighten it up. And let's recap before we end the episode. So it is now Tuesday morning. We're not expected until Saturday morning. We've still got 99 hours of, or almost 100 hours of our job window. And our next rest stop is in 14 hours. I've been Simulate Dirk. Thank you very much for watching. Let's enjoy some realistic slices of life. Little bit of a preview of what I've been doing lately. But don't tell anyone. And I'll be back next time. Stay safe out there. And watch out for trucks. Bye for now.
There are those who would like to see you fail in your journey. That's not going to happen on my watch. Let's go. Can we stop for ice cream, Bart? Can we stop for ice cream? Oh, it's the Max! Ho 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 ho! The Portland Light Rail System, the Max, and that's what it actually looks like. How sweet! Okay, end of May, June, July, and now we're into August, so... That was the longest night of my life. <laughs> 